So just off the beach here, there's actually thousands of black tip sharks right now. This is actually prime time for the black tip migrations. So every single year around this time, black tips swim down to the south of Florida where it's warmer waters and uh, they're chased by great hammerheads, by bull sharks and all the predators that lurk just off in the deeper waters. This particular beach though, they come really, really close into shore and that is literally because that deep shelf bottlenecks towards the beach. They're actually the second most harvested shark in Florida. Glad you're able to swing by. I know. It's, well, we thought about it, but we just assumed it would be super busy as well yeah. at the time. It is, so it is a really busy time. But, yeah. You know, this is this is uh, important. No, definitely. It's all just kind of worked out perfectly, yeah. really, timing-wise. So, how? Um, I'm just going to have to go backwards for the sure, sake of this sure. to no ask problem. you some similar questions. But how long have you actually been here at FAU? I've been here for 14 years now. Really? And I've been doing this uh, aerial survey to count the sharks for the past nine years. And that's specifically black, black yep, tips? Yep, just the black tips. This is my lab over here. The lab. Oh, nice. Yeah, there's, there's mm. plenty of sharks out there this year. It's been a really good year. Yeah. And uh, we've been pretty successful at, at catching sharks. So this week we've kind of blown out with weather. But uh, yeah. we're going to pick up again starting this weekend and get out there some more. Have you had the drones since day one with this study and the plane surveys, uh, we, or is that new? Uh, no, we, uh, I've been doing the airplane surveys for the past nine years, and the drone we only picked up last year. You say it's been a good year. That, do you think part of that has come because you now can target where the sharks are? Uh, no, because um, I say good year because I looked at the total numbers of sharks that we've seen from the aerial surveys. Yeah. It's been a consistent methodology, and we've got more sharks this year already than we had last year, for example. So that's a so great that, sign. That's a great sign for what's, what's coming. And why are the sharks coming down here in the first place? I think these sharks are probably here to overwinter in the slightly warmer water, um, and so they're following their preferred temperature down, down, down. They're staying down here, and then as the water warms up farther north, they're going to start uh, moving north in the springtime. Yeah, and, and we don't really necessarily know what it is. is it, are they following the prey types? Because there's, there's right. differences, isn't there? It's not every single black tip that right. comes. There's well, there's, there's uh, a sexual segregation. We see males down here. We don't see females. The females are farther north, and so why aren't they both down here, right? Um, and we don't know if it's necessarily following their prey, or whether the prey are following the temperature and the sharks are following the prey, et cetera. So there's you know, various factors. It's not, it's not a nice clean, it this. Yeah. You can correlate it with temperature, but it's not necessarily the, the causation. Whenever we're doing talks and, and public outreach, it's good to have samples to show people and talk about, you know, these are X, you know, hammerhead, black tips. Tiger sharks. I was going to say, you've got tiger there, tiger definitely. Lemon there. is that lemon, next to yeah. yeah. Lemon. Oh, wow. Actually, I've never seen, never seen cool? a hammerhead. Yeah, I know. I didn't realize. Want to see that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, please. It's pretty neat. I didn't realize they had all of the. Is that cartilage? No. It's all cartilage. The whole cartilaginous. Uh, wow. Your cranium. How this big would this have been? Is this uh, a great the, hammerhead? No, that's or? a scalloped hammerhead. Still quite yeah. big, isn't it? it really, is a, it was an adult scalloped hammerhead from Hawaii. Um, oh, I'm trying to think. That was probably around uh, eight foot or so, something like that. Look at all those teeth. Can you see it? We've got lots and lots of jaws. Which lots one of out there? Do you have black tips? Yeah, I do. And the black tips, it's nice because you can show people. Uh, oh man, it's one of these. Here's a black tip. So many big but what I do is when I, when I show people the, uh, the jaws, what we talk about primarily are the, uh, the, the type of prey that these black tips are eating. Little sharp pointy teeth, right? Yeah. These are not out to rip your arms off. These are going to give you little puncture wounds, if yeah. anything, if they bite you. But their teeth are really good for picking up little, little fish, little prey mm. that way. 
And uh, I point out that that's the, the problem that we have with people getting bitten, is they're in really murky water, yeah. you know, they're on their little paddle boards or something in muddy water, and the shark can't quite make out, is that a shiny little fish or is that like the palm of your hand? Yeah. And that's why people get bit, but it's not a, it's not a fatal bite, it's just an unpleasant bite. There's some really uh, compelling footage of great hammerheads chasing down the black tip sharks. And uh, these black tips, you know, are, are taken out by the hammers, by the big bulls, by the, you know, the other uh, larger sharks. And that's one of the reasons people have suggested that these uh, uh, black tips are, are shoaling so close to shore, is maybe to stay out to of the way of the, the big of predators, right? Area. Yeah. With regard to the hammerheads then, because they migrate too, do, yeah. is that in any sort of synchronicity with the way these guys move? Yeah, I, I don't have the data on that. It's know. a really good question. <laughs> I don't know what the hammerhead might, you know, movement is. Yeah. I think that's one of the next iterations for this. Is we've yeah. looked at the uh, we've looked at the black tips. Now we need to look at their their predators. Yeah. You know, what, are, what are the hammerheads doing? Because I guess if there's any problem then with the black tips not making it down here for any reason or deciding to change their route the knock-on effect of that in terms of the rest of the food chain right. can be quite vast. Right, and that's uh, another broad question that we don't have an answer for. What are all these cascading effects? It's hard yeah. to predict, right? You can you can say, I would guess this, but you know, nature is much more complex, complex than we would, we, would, uh, we would expect. So with there being, down. yeah, yeah, go for that, <laughs> give me some space. With there being so much in terms of the, the fisheries and how many black tips that we necessarily have or how many hammerheads. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, there, that there's so, so much unknown that it would be hard to kind of set quotas in some respect at this point? Uh, you know, I think that we have some pretty good fisheries data, commercial fisheries landings yeah. for these, these black tips. I mean, the black tips are one of the the few species that is harvested commercially yes. here. So are they not like the second? I think it's largest. second next to sandbars. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, and so I think there's good fisheries data to mm. give us an estimate of populations that way. Yeah. And I think that's probably sufficient data to manage them. But what about the prey items that they're yeah, eating? Yeah, that's, that's where that's, it gets complicated. That's another whole factor, right? You <laughs> yeah. know, and uh, I don't know what the. Because it, it's super hard, isn't it, to look at one specific point of the food chain mm -hmm. without and taking say, into account right, every exactly, other external exactly. factor. And, and people always think, oh, they're sharks, they're the, the, the top. No, no, they're not. They're black tips, but they're eaten by other bigger yeah. sharks, so they're not the, the top. They are one of the, one of the links. Yeah. Do you, um, what do you think it was that drew you to black tips specifically? It was just uh, happenstance. They're the ones who show up here in big numbers. And so if the sharks appear at your doorstep, that's the ones I'm going to study. It just makes life when so much easier. When you say big numbers, how many are we talking? Literally thousands. Thousands come down here and spend the winter um, offshore, right, right off Palm Beach County here. And um, it's right, right in front of our, right in front of our university. So it's a great opportunity. The sharks come to us. Is this the further south that they go? Do they tend to stay in this area then for a little while now? Yeah, and so in looking at these aerial surveys, it's interesting that they come down to the Palm Beach County, and that's about where they stay. They, we don't get big numbers going past that into uh, Broward or, or Miami-Dade, for example. And so Palm Beach is about the southern terminus of their uh, migration. And how important is their migration to other species? Uh, to other species? Yeah. I mean, I think you've got this um, intricate food web where everyone is connected. And so if you have literally thousands of black tips sweeping down to this area and spending a couple of months every winter, you're going to have a massive effect on the local ecosystem, right? Yeah. And then when they go away again, things will probably rebound or whatever. But um, as this, this bolus of, of predators moves up and down the coast, they're going to have an effect all the way uh, along throughout their migratory range. And I think that's what's interesting. If you look at the uh, migration, you know, as it's shifting to higher latitudes, you're going to have this impact of these top-level predators or these upper-level predators going farther north than they yeah. ever did just a few decades ago. So that potentially in other areas might end up like displacing other right. predators and prey items and it, whole yeah. ecosystems and, and so, could be out of know, Whoever used to be the top predator might you now become prey to these ones. and. You know, you, you don't know what exactly is going to happen through these various cascading effects.
would you say, in your knowledge and experience, that this movement of black tips is something that is changing? Based on our data and looking back through the, the literature over the past several decades, it looks like the distribution of these black tips is shifting north yeah. uh, in the summer, farther, farther north than they ever went before. To get up, well, to maintain to, their body temperature, right, I guess. Right, exactly. So, so they have to follow a set temperature, temperature of exactly, water. Exactly, exactly. And as a result, they're probably exploiting different resources than they, than they have historically. So they're eating the prey items that they wouldn't have eaten before in an area that right. is not used to having hammerheads exactly. in there and or having tips, yeah. bulls and tiger sharks right. and black tips and the entire... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so really it is almost turning those systems on their head mm -hmm. completely. How, um, how would you say that our actions around the world is affecting this? Or would you say our actions around the world are affecting this? Well, I would definitely say that uh, temperature is increasing, all right? But the debate is always how much of that increase is man-made versus yeah. a natural cycle. Um, I'm not the expert in that. That's, no. that's for, you know, a geologist or yeah. someone to answer rather than, rather than me. I can only look at the biology and say yeah. their distribution is shifting. It's a tight correlation with temperature. Um, you know, whatever's driving it, it's having you know, ramifications throughout the ecosystems. This is one of our data loggers. The, uh, the data logger unit sits in here. Um, it has a, a spot tag that's a satellite tag. So when this thing uh, pops off the animal close to the surface, the satellite tag tells us where on the planet it's located. And then we have to go out and find it floating around in the ocean. We have a separate VHF antenna. And we have a yep. directional Yagi antenna that enables us to find this thing floating around. How long so does it take to, to find them usually? Uh, if, we, if we do it well, it's not that long. Yeah. Because uh, this tells us basically where the haystack is mm. on the planet. And then we go to that general area find and then the we needle. find the needle within <laughs> it. Um, and that's, you know, if we're, if we're lucky and if things go well, it's great. You see, there it is. We go out there and we look around and sure enough, we, we pick it up. But it's, you know, it's a little package floating around in a big ocean. So Where on a shark would this attach? Well, this mounts to the dorsal fin of the yep. shark like this, and the data logger is facing this way. So as it's moving through the water, uh, it's collecting you know, the, the, the temperature, the depth, the uh, 3D acceleration, the light level, the velocity, the magnetic heading. All this information is logging it all in a little data logger package here. And then um, we have these galvanic releases that are used to strap on, and these will dissolve after X amount of time. Uh, so a certain number of the hours. The plastic or the metal? Uh, the metal. Wow. The metal actually dissolves in, okay. in seawater. And uh, when it does that, this pops off, this whole package pops off the animal and floats up to the surface and floats upright like this with the antenna sticking out of the water. The pop off satellite tags as well, right? And so these are going to go on the animals and they'll stay on for a number of months. And after a predetermined time, eight months or something, they're gonna pop off, float to the surface, and tell us what depth and what temperature the shark had been at for the previous several months. And this is gonna give us an idea of um, their behavior during their migration. So after they leave here, and they're migrating farther north, um, we'll see you know, not only how far north they go, um, but also what temperature they're at. Were they, were they following this fixed or this, this preferred temperature? Are they hanging out at a, per, you know, a particular depth? They're going up and down in the water column day and night, you know? Uh, this will give us uh, that sort of information. So we're gonna start deploying these pop-off satellite transmitters uh, this year as well. And for those people um, in the animal activist mm -hmm. side of mm -hmm. things that don't really like to see the, the tags on the sharks, what would your response to that be? Right, I, I can certainly sympathize with that, and I, I understand. I think my argument would be that we are inconveniencing a tiny fraction of the population. You know, 0.001% of the population gets a tag. And we are learning so much from that small number that we can then apply to the population as a whole. And that's going to be important when it comes to conservation, when it comes to developing the, uh, the, the management that we need, we're able to say, oh, we know where these sharks are going. They're going here, 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 and based on these tag returns, we can uh, properly manage the population that way and, in, 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 you know, create regulation to, to help the, the animals do well. So, yes, it's an inconvenience for a few, but it really is going to help the population as a whole. So it's a greater good, really. There is a greater good, yeah. yeah. 
And what we, what really is the the biggest aim of this study in the, in a perfect scenario? Because obviously, with nature, it doesn't always sure, go to plan. But. Sure. Well, you know, we have a unique opportunity here to look at the migration of these these animals because no one else has this this population basically coming down right in front of their 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 institution. And this is a massive population. I would like to know more about the impact of these thousands of sharks as they move up and down the entire eastern seaboard of the U.S. That's a long stretch of coastline uh, yeah. on the western Atlantic, and it's a large population of sharks. I think by studying this population, we're able to say, uh, you know, make some predictions about the shark population as a whole. And so I think there's real value in looking at this from a variety of aspects. What are they eating? You know, what's their prey base? Who's eating them? You know, what are their predators? Where is everyone moving with respect to each other? Um, there's, there's a lot of aspects here that sort of intertwine, and I think there's real value in doing this good comprehensive study to, to pull it all together. Would you say then that there are still quite a lot of unknowns surrounding the shark world? Uh, there's way more unknowns than there are knowns, yeah, and, and the more you do, the more you realize, oh, we should do this, oh, oh, that, what about this? And then you realize that this project that started out as a simple aerial survey nine years ago has now grown into this massive aerial survey and, and multi, you know, uh, multi-tag uh, program as well. And so we're making this into a much bigger program. We're learning a whole lot more than we ever did. And it's just opening more and more questions. i got to ask, why sharks for you? Just since I was a little kid, you know, I was always interested growing up in this small landlocked farming community in uh, the middle of the continent. Uh, that was my great escape, was watching you know, Jacques Cousteau specials and saying, wow, that's really cool. And to actually get a chance to do it for a living is just incredible. So just, I don't know why, just always interested and I'm delighted that I'm actually doing it. That's amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, my pleasure. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs>